Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about my uh, trips to the analysis. I'm in yourself. In fancy slides. I'm Andrew Hill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> small print. Um, I should probably say uh, that I'm just coming to the end of my PhD and I've been looking at uh, interpretation of electroacoustic audiovisual music. So I think some of those bits uh, are going to feed into my talk but didn't necessarily feed into uh, this discussion because in terms of my discussion, I don't really just want, I don't really want to describe what it was that I did. I want to talk more about the kind of approach, why I did what I did. Um, and I know that uh, Simon's probably going to be very worried because I've got both a way more <laughs> and uh, a spectrogram here. Um, but the more astute of you will notice that, yeah, I've pinched that from Audioscope as well, uh, but in the new version, which has got the colour. Uh, so, really, I suppose the inspiration for my uh, analysis um, came from uh, one that Mike had done previously with Audioscope. Uh, so Mike had uh, done a kind of analysis on that showed all the events in the piece. But when I looked at it, I thought to myself, well, okay, that shows me where there's a drip and where there's a drop. But I can hear that when I listen to the piece. So if I'm going to do an analysis, I want to find out something more from the piece. And so I wanted to look at it in a more overarching structural form, which I suppose I guess is what Lee was mentioning about other uh, <coughs> elements. Um, and so I suppose the first thing that I want to kind of really make clear is the kind of distinction between kind of the physical signal and uh, the perceived object. So I think that the, the signal of the piece um, is obviously a fixed thing that everyone will hear, everyone listening to the piece will hear the same physical signal, but obviously we'll all uh, interpret it in slightly different ways. And the way that I went around uh, trying to interpret this piece was I thought about how it was probably created. So it was composed in 1955, or maybe in the last 1955, and um, so therefore I guess that it was probably made using tape. So maybe I could find tape loops that were used in the composition. So I suppose that I uh, projected my own uh, interpretation of the intention. I'm a bit wary of the kind of uh, poetic leakage, the kind of compositional incontinence. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, because uh, I think that there is kind of a, a, a strong divide. As a, an audience member, I think, uh, obviously are not privy to the compositional intent in any way, although there are probably some uh, signifiers encoded in the uh, subject position of uh, the signal. So I can recognize that this uh, the, a three drip loop pattern occurred here and then returned a bit later in the piece, which I suppose uh, is uh, I'll see. And so obviously, uh, I think um, there are elements of the kind of compositional intention and structure that you can take from the physical signal. But um, I don't think that they are, I think we should be very aware that they are inferred by us, the people that are doing the analysis, rather than uh, inherent necessarily in the uh, signal itself. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I don't know kind of what else to uh, say about the piece. I mean, I, uh, I approach this in terms of uh, I mentioned looking for the tape loops and trying to make sense of it structurally uh, in terms of how it was uh, composed um, because I thought that that would give me uh, a sense of how it was created and I suppose also it gives it, it a link to the historical perspective kind of positions it in, in the tools um, and the construction of it so um, yeah, I think that's, that's uh, everything I have to say about my analysis. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think it's quite good, I suppose, that in the context of the Orama project, I think it's, I was inspired to do this analysis by Mike's uh, 
analysis that he'd done. So I think I found it quite beneficial to have my previous analysis. So I guess linking to Manuela's point, uh, it's, I think it's a positive thing to have other analyses there because I can inspire you to think in different ways rather than, I suppose there is also the potential that you'd be uh, conditioned to think in a certain way and use a certain technique, but I think maybe there is still kind of room for individuality and you know, interpretation. And could you take us through more detail as to actually what your analysis did as opposed to Mike's? Mm -hmm. You've summarised it, but I'm not absolutely sure what you meant. Okay, well, uh, so Mike's uh, analysis in uh, the acousograph highlighted all of the individual events uh, in, um, in the piece. So uh, his was a more kind of zoomed in, uh, kind of scrolled down, I think, in, in different sections. So you could see in much closer period of detail the uh, pitch structures and the different pitches of the wheat. Um, but as I said, I wanted to take more of a macro approach. So I um, basically decided to divided these up into the various different um, looping sections. So, uh, for example, there's a piece starts with uh, a kind of metronomic type of uh, dripping loop, which then slowly is built on by these other different layers of uh, process transposed uh, drip loops. Um, and so I, I think I'm just going to show you kind of how structurally it was, uh, it was built up. And then in the centre, you have this large Yosandi uh, <coughs> section. And then we bring back some of the material from the earlier section uh, there for a final, for a final coding. So yeah, I suppose uh, in terms of this, you don't get so much uh, perspective on the kind of the individual pitches. Um, but then I think the piece is available on the site. Well, no, it's not, but if you can, there's the references to the. There's a, a big uh, block of text that explains it in better detail than my digital handwriting and some of the pictures. Okay, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Just, uh, it's not being sort of pedantic, I'm just curious. No. I'm just curious about how it would look, that's all. I think that's one of the things that uh, Simon mentioned earlier in the morning session, that oh, right. actually the, uh, the sonogram isn't necessarily that useful because it tells us about the physical signal uh, that we can hear if we just, yeah. you know, it doesn't, it's useful for kind of visualising. And so so presumably Mike's, Mike's analysis would be focusing on how things like that where yours is much more overall. Yeah, I think Mike's would uh, could show, show you a lot more detail of the different pitch relationships between individual events and the <coughs> decays of the notes, but had less of an overarching uh, macro structure. <coughs> 